Hey everybody, all my followers, welcome to another video. So, this video today is on a 2010 Mercedes CLC 220. Did I say 2010? I think I did. Um, and, uh, okay, so the story uh, with the car, and this is what I've been told by the owner, is the following. This car has been through, I think, a few garages, I think the only place he hasn't been yet is the dealer. I think, uh, well, I've been told the crankshaft sensor has been changed. Uh, not sure if anything else. But I know for a fact the car has been around a few places already to try to fix this problem. Um, however, the car came to me uh, with it. So it hasn't been resolved yet. And the issue is the following. According to the owner, the car just stops randomly. It cuts out randomly. Um, according to him, uh, you can the car. The engine is cold. I haven't started the engine yet today. Um, and apparently, you can start the car in the morning, like now. Start the engine, go for a drive or go to whatever, and the car runs just fine. Some of the times, you do exactly the same. Five minutes into driving, and the car cuts off. And um, according to him is is more prone to happen when you come to a stop like uh, like when you stop a traffic lights or whatever that's when it's more prone to happen um but but yeah currently to uh, to what he said it's quite random it can happen anytime with the, the according to the owner as well there is no pattern to it unless there is and he just didn't realize yet so the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to do a scan on the car and I might go for a drive, try to see if I can find some sort of pattern. I don't know if there's any, any really, but I will try. I don't know. We'll try. We'll drive. We'll fill the car and we'll try to see. But before that, I'm going to get uh, the car scanned. Uh, I only got the car yesterday. I only managed to get the car running really to put it from that side of the road into here. Um, he, he run just fine. I haven't seen really nothing wrong with it. He didn't. He didn't cut out. Nothing like that. He run just fine. Um, so yeah, I haven't experienced the problem yet. Um, so yeah. So we're gonna scan the car. Uh, I'm not gonna use the Maxi C's in this case, or for now, for the simple fact that well, there's two reasons. But one is that I was scanning a car uh, yesterday with that because uh, the Maxi C's wouldn't show me what I was looking for, so I had to use this one. Uh, and the, the laptop was on charge, so it was, was, was at hand, so I just decided to use the, the star. So we're gonna plug it in. I'll get the engine running, obviously, um, and, um, and we'll try to go from there, try to see if we figure out what, what is wrong with it. Okay, so I was just trying to run the guy uh, to ask him a little bit more info because there's something happened here that did not happen yesterday, and I'm a little bit confused. Uh, he never mentioned this to me. I can't start the engine. So the car is in park, as you can see. And from here, I don't even think I should need to press the brake on these cars. But even if I press the brake, as you're going to see, I'm pressing the brake. If he's going to start now, he's going to let me down. Look, key is full turned. Nothing happens. Okay, so this is weird because he did not tell me this. He did not tell me that the car wouldn't start. He only mentioned to me that the car would get out. So I'm a little bit confused now. And okay. The guy is now answering the phone, so we're going to proceed with the diagnostics, but in a different way now, because obviously I can't get the engine to run. I could try a few more times, like, you know, press the brake, take it from park, this and the other, but I want to try to understand exactly why he's not doing it now, why he's not starting now. So this is the right time to scan the car and try to figure it out, okay? And that's exactly what I'm going to look. I just turned the ignition on and it took all this time to actually... What's wrong with this car? 
Okay. Okay, so let, let, let's gonna try to see what, what's wrong with this. Okay, so we are nearly there. The battery voltage is not very high, so am I gonna have to manage to get this engine running somehow? It's weird. It started absolutely fine yesterday when I moved it uh, from that side of the road into here. Because when they dropped the car, I was not. I was at home, but I was. I was just coming out from night. So okay, let's kind of go control units. Yeah, that's what I want. And I want to go straight to drive. Common rail or engine ECU. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, let me go to fault codes. Wow. Wow, wow. Wow, wow. Let me go to actual values. Okay, so synchronization. More start enable, yes. Start enable control module, yes. 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 So that everything is fine here. So let me see if I turn the key. I can't believe we've seen this and I, I didn't even press the, the pedal the brake I don't I don't think on these cars you need to do that anyway but as you have seen it just started fine this time mm. this was weird now okay uh, let me do something here. Let me turn it off again. And try again. Oh, come on. It started and it just went off straight away. Yeah, it started and it just shut shut down straight away. Let me try again. Okay, it's running. Hmm. Okay, this is weird. This is really weird. It's going to be one of those things. Okay, so I'm going to try to dig a little bit further, try to understand. Uh, but yeah, it started and it shut down straight away. And now it started fine second time, it's running. So I think there's a few more tests 
a few more things to look at. Uh, I'm going to try to to understand what's going on, uh, see if I find anything on the live data, but I don't need to be here to take you through. As soon as I find, I'll let you know exactly uh, where we are. Okay, so I, I start to feel that this is going to be a fuel pressure problem, a fuel regulation problem. Uh, this is the warming up phase and uh, as you can see uh, we need to be fuel uh, coolant temperature between 20 and 60 we are now on 45 so just about kind of halfway through fuel temperature should be um, over 20 degrees is at 16 we are a little bit away from there yet but I don't think this 4 degrees will make much of a difference uh, and as you come down the rate pressure, so we have these two on the black, so they shouldn't be on the black. Uh, so the um, pressure control valve should be somewhere between 22 and 26 percent, is at 14 percent. Um, okay, so and um, the quantity flow valve, which should be between 35 and 40, is at 26. But yeah, we have these two out on the warming up phase not really sure yet if this is gonna mean anything but we'll have to I will have to dig a little bit further and this was quite interesting because out of the blue I felt something on the engine a little bit of a like uh, I don't know I felt something and all of a sudden all the values went obviously the the fuel temperature was already on 20 uh, but these values all of a sudden these two they just went into specification it was really weird it was really weird i don't know yet what's going on here but yeah it was like i just felt like a sort of a vibration on the engine like a little bit of change in in in, in the engine and all, all of a sudden it's just bang gone so don't know yet exactly what happened here but uh, we're gonna have to have a look so I'm gonna go now check this one here I don't think I'm uh, at 60 degrees yet no 59.4 um, Nevertheless, these two, they still not where they should be, but okay. Injector values or smooth run injector values, they are all pretty much okay, they are all within specifications. So that was the minimum value that went to that injector and this is the maximum. You have the coding and obviously as it says in there if any value goes uh, minus or plus 5 then we need to worry about but they are all well in specifications. So I don't think we have an injector issue here. Okay so I can't really see anything else wrong with live data. I've checked every single other ECU. There's no faults anywhere. No fault codes. The car is pretty much fault code free. There was a few fault codes on the front sam for some lights, uh, uh, for some bulbs and stuff like that, but that was it. Uh, the only thing that's still not right, as you can see, the coolant temperature is now 75. So it's nearly engine temperature, or very close to that. And we still have an issue with the pressure control valve. So the quantity control valve, as you can see in there, is just about right. Uh, every now and then it actually comes off the, the range, but it's just about in. But that one, still out, 2%. So I think what I'm going to do is we're going to test this valve, uh, the pressure control valve. And the beauty of the this 
diagnostics is that he will tell you everything. The only thing is that he doesn't do it for you, but he tells you absolutely everything. So we're going to select the valve we want to test, and obviously he tells you to check for leaks. Uh, basically, what he does is increases the pressure to about 15 under bars or something like that. We're not going to do that. Um, I don't think there's any leaks in there. What we're going to do, the first thing I'm going to do, because some of these tests you need to actually, uh, they use an adapter, but you actually need to connect the valve and the engine running and test the circuit, which means I would have to pierce the wires or uh, I'm not going to, we'll do that eventually, but the, the first one I want to do, I'm going to check is the is this one. Check the internal resistance of Y74. And if you press enter, it tells you here how to do it. So look at this. You don't need to be an expert to do this. It tells you here everything. Step by step, you can't get this wrong. It's not rocket science, this test. The only thing that is a little bit sometimes, um, how to put it across, that is imperative is measure it, no problem, but is to know what the specific value should be. And obviously, good that we have this because it tells me exactly it should be between four and five ohms, and that's the resist the resistance of the valve between pin one and pin two, and that's what we're going to do. Okay, so I'm measuring the resistance of the Y74, and as you can see, is about 4.5 ohms, <coughs> which is just within specifications. So we have no problems with that. John, the next thing I'm going to test, or we're going to test, is the, sin the signal voltage uh, for the pressure valve. Um, and this basically tells me that it needs to be plugged in, uh, you need to connect the adapter, which is basically a, a sort of bypass, so you can then measure using the multimeter. Um, anyway, so we're going to measure the voltage between uh, pin 1 and 2, uh, there's only two pins on the valve anyway, and we should have, it tells me to operate the engine at idling speed, uh, fuel temp um, over 20, carry out the test within 30 seconds. Uh, we're going to start the engine again. Um, and uh, basically we should have somewhere uh, between 1.7 and 2 volts. Uh, it tells me to turn the ignition off. Uh, I believe it means, uh, what it says, uh, switch ignition off. I think it doesn't really mean ignition off off because if I turn the ignition completely off, I will have no voltage at the valve. So I believe what it means is engine off, uh, ignition on. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to turn off the engine, switch off, switch on the ignition and check the voltage on the multimeter. So it's connected already anyway, it's back probing the, the valve. So all we're going to do is, is doing exactly that. So we're going to turn ignition off, ignition on. And we have 2.8 volts. So we have 2.8 volts, um, which is a little bit over, nearly a volt over the maximum. So I'm start to believe that the problem is that valve. Okay, everything is pointing to that. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, the other test is just curiosity. So if I say no, So it tells me to check for corrosion, etc, etc, which we will do. Uh, so my next thing before I go, f definitely for, uh, for me to blame completely the valve, is obviously uh, check connections. The connection of the valve is fine because I had it off. It's absolutely fine, nothing wrong with it. ECU side, I don't know yet because I haven't got that. I haven't unplugged anything there. Um, this is uh, the same chassis, or a very, it's probably the same chassis as the C-Class. And I've done one on a C-Class where we have seen a lot of corrosion in that area. So I think am I might going to take that into bits, have a look, inspect for corrosion, for any port contacts, 
But yeah, the 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 valve current consumption, as we have seen, was a little bit over. This um, specified value is a little bit over uh, the the signal. Uh, the only thing, the only check that ticked out was the actually internal resistance of the component, which, to be fair, if that was if that one was out, I would blame the valve straight away. But the problem is because that would cause all the other the other two, obviously. But the problem is the the internal resistance actually checked out just fine. So that's why we can't just jump in to replace the valve without doing all the checks. So my next check is going to be uh, take the wipers and this this sort of cover here at the front to have a good access to the ECU, remove the ECU, check the ECU and, and go from there, really. Okay, so no no corrosion everything looks clean as a whistle no problems here uh, everything looks absolutely fine uh, I've checked uh, continuity so I've checked wires from here to the valve uh, everything checked out both wires everything is absolutely fine so the only last thing I'm gonna do is um, dismantle this plug compression uh, put a little bit of pressure on these plates inside make sure we have a, an absolutely good connection to the valve uh, but I um, start to think that the valve is gone and that's it we're gonna have to replace this valve okay so I was just um, so I did what I said I've uh, compressed those plates on that plug put everything back on and uh, I just moved my cars I was just about to go for a test drive when something happened here and more and more I'm towards to believe our problem is something else it's not gonna be that valve I have my doubts now although the valve might be okay but look at this I don't know I hope he does it again no it doesn't okay so I was turning the key I've done it three or four times I've turned the key to position two starting fine now but I will turn the key to position 2 and position 2 wouldn't come on that would come on and then on position 2 nothing would come on it would stay as position 1 like that like this one here it wouldn't do anything else and obviously it wouldn't crank uh, this is going to be an electrical problem somewhere this is going to be an electrical problem definitely it's not going to be what I think it is no chance just fine now every single time oh dear this is gonna be complicated okay it's typical um, e e I've tried to record this 100 times and, and uh, every time I was recording it wouldn't happen but it happened a few times while I was not recording which was as I've said earlier I would turn the ignition on into position 2 and position 2 wouldn't come on it would stay in position 1 now I kinda narrow it down I'm gonna show you exactly what happens look at this I have took this off so I have access to the ECS um, and look at this I'm gonna turn the ignition on Position two. Look, it did. It didn't even come on properly. Look, you see. Position two. Look, if I turn the ignition now, nothing happened. So position two. Now we came on. And now I'm going to put my hand through here and wiggle the plugs at the back of the EZS. And I wanted to see you. Look at that. Can you see that? Look, I can make it to happen. Hang on, let me see if I can... Because I haven't took it off yet, I don't know exactly where the problem is. Look, see in there? There is a certain movement back here on these plugs that makes the... the thing to go off completely. Where is that? Come on, do it again. Earlier I could just do it every single time. Come on! I think you've seen it anyway, but... Try to uh... 
Oh, there we go. You see that? Look, everything is off. Look. See this? Look at that. I don't want to carry on because I don't want to damage anything. But I think you got uh, you got the picture. So there is something behind this is yes. That's no good. Um, so I think this was a quite a good lesson because I was barking at the wrong tree. Uh, I think we got it wrong from the beginning. Um, but uh, but yeah, let's gonna let's gonna dismantle this, take the the easy S out and, and have a look at it, see exactly why he's doing this. It was the plug that goes here, which is the plug that if I kind of touch or move about, makes everything to go off. Um, the first thing I've done was once again, as I done on the on the on the thing, was compress the plates uh, inside the, the 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 female. So when it goes in, it makes proper pressure against the pins. That made no difference. But um, as soon as I start to inspect this, uh, it's obviously that someone has been in here before, and uh, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Is I don't think this is yes belongs to this car or this car has suffered some sort of problem with maybe with the lock switch with the steering lock because there's I don't know if you're going to be able to see but there is look someone has been soldering something here something over here over here so obviously some someone has been reading these uh, these uh, microcontroller uh, now Inspecting the the pins here from here where they go inside. I can't see nothing one is soldered straight into the PCB Nice, you can't really see very good. Can you? Uh, which is this one here on the side it goes there down It goes straight down to the PCB this one here, but the other ones they go inside the lock or the other ones So I'm thinking that there is something inside this lock That's not right and that's what we're gonna do next is Take things into bits. Okay, so before we move any forward, um, there's one thing I didn't try, and uh, and I want to talk about it. Um, I haven't tried whether the engine running actually touched the cable as I've showed you uh, with the ignition on. I haven't tried that with the engine running and see if the car would cut off, but. I think we can all agree that with the position 2 of the ignition uh, being obviously switched off by wobbling this cable, um, I think we can all agree that if position 2 would go off, there is essential systems for the engine to run that are shut off when position 2 is turned off. So I think we can all agree that most likely, I mean I'm pretty much 100% sure that the engine would get out. So, um, so yeah, uh, so I haven't tried it. I'm not going to put everything back together now, just to go there and try that. Um, I'm quite convinced that uh, that the engine, it would get off. Uh, so, moving forward uh, from, from that. Uh, so, I have removed the electronic side from the mechanical side. And um, the way this works, um, I will take a little bit through, is when you insert the key, uh, on. Yeah, so when you insert the key, let me see if I... Okay, so when you turn on the key, uh, this okay, so this little uh, metal piece just came off, but this thing is is in there, and then so anyway, so that basically when you push in, when you put the key, and if let me put this right, out, I don't want you to miss a thing. So when you put the key, I want you to look at this thing here, and you're gonna see that when I put the key in. That goes in. Can you see that? Moving in. 
Okay, so when that moves in, essentially what it does is, there is this little lever that is not now in place, but it belongs to, to here, and that pushes this one here, okay? It pushes this one <coughs> uh, that way. And when this one goes that way, it push this switch here, like that, okay? And this is the position that when you just insert the key, so you push the key by pressing this little switch here, the car knows the key has been inserted, power up this module and obviously reads the transponder. And that's the first stage. Then you have the second stage, which is the first turn. Now, <coughs> the, well, at the same time, sorry about that, at the same time, this coil here is energized and it pulls, uh, where is that? And it pulls this white lever here, I don't know if you can see it, pulls it up like that. And when it pulls it up, it allows the key to turn. At the moment, I can't turn the key. I don't know if you can see there. It just hits right at the end of this white... Uh, you see, it just hits that. But if I push this down, now it's gonna... It's gonna be a little bit difficult to do both. But it's gonna run under this uh, thing, like that. It's gonna run under, and it's gonna allow me... There we go. To turn the key. And now it's not anymore. Okay, another thing that happens, so everything else happens inside here, inside this chem system. So this is what happens. I uh, just want to take this very careful because there is, hang on, just hold a second, let me put this, let's get this down and keep it down. Oh, it's going to be tricky. Okay, so the first turn, what happened is, and I want you to look at this here, this is spring loaded, yeah? So this is your first turn, it's spring loaded and I'm gonna have to look for it now, what an idiot. Okay, I found all the bits. Oh gosh, we do things sometimes. I found all the bits. So anyway, that's spring loaded. So when you turn the key, so the key is position zero now. So when you turn it in the position one, which is this one, okay, that allows that pin to come up. And that press this switch here. Right there. This one here. Okay? Uh, now, and that's position one, then we have position two, so, so let's gonna look at it, so position one, position two, crank, okay, now our problem, I never seen a problem on position one, so this position is always good was always on position 2. So we need to understand what happens when position 2 turns. And all these cams do is pressing this white uh, sort of spring-loaded pins here. It's all they do. So this goes in here like that. Okay. And I'm going to try to figure out what happens on position 2. But I'm going to do that off camera probably. Because otherwise it's going to be a little bit tricky. Hold on. I might do on camera. Why not? Okay, so in position 2. The only thing that happens, you're not going to be able to see it. I doubt you're going to be able to see this. Inside, uh, maybe. In position two. 
only thing that happens Oh, you can actually see so if you see all the cams you can't see them all but this cam at the bottom for the first uh, pin it, it just carries on it just will just carry on pressing it because this is not fully pressed so if I push it down we'll press that one the one next there's nothing underneath then you have the other one which is at the moment there is the cam is still underneath and then you have one at the back that's still underneath but what happened is when you turn to position two the only thing you can see is the cam just turns away from that third one, from this one here. You can see it just turns it, it just goes away from it, which means this pin would just come out and make contact into position two. All the other ones they remain pressed, so that's going to be our problem. It's going to be the third one, uh, which we're going to Let's see what I have. Uh, on. There it is. Which I'm going to mark down to make sure I don't get this wrong. Let me have a look again. So it's that one here. We're gonna mark it down so we know which one is, and that's the one we need to make sure is working. Now we can have a cam that is worn and is not pushing in far enough. Or we can have a problem here between that and the switch uh, and obviously we're gonna open all this because that's the only way is take things into bits okay so the the thing is now completely opened as you can see and uh, what we have is this sort of these plates here they are all on the same pin and uh, to be fair I can't really see anything wrong I mean contact wise they are pretty much quite clean as you can probably see all the contact points um, there is only one thing that I'm gonna do I'm gonna bend all these plates okay so when the pin when this white so when this white button there or whatever you want to call it so when that goes down the plate has enough pressure to ensure a good contact so we we're going to bend them all down we're going to bend them down and make sure they they do plenty of pressure against the contacts on the other side that's the only thing i'm going to do and then put everything back together okay because I think that's the only thing really it's going to be that it's just not enough pressure against there against the, the the other side and it just makes it to fail so yeah let's gonna do that let's gonna bend this so we increase the pressure uh, the contact pressure okay so to open these up um, I forgot to tell you you have all these little Come on, you have all these little uh, kind of tabs here that you need to pull out, but then on this side, this has been actually plastic melted here, look, one, two, three, four points of contact, so what I'm going to do, just going to melt this back in, let's make sure, And one last one. This first one was not very good. That's it. And now I can feel much more pressure on these pins here, obviously. The uh, but yeah, the pressure is, is much higher. So all I'm gonna do now is really just put everything back together because I'm that confident that uh, this was indeed uh, the problem and uh, that we just got to fix now. So let's gonna put all all back together 
Uh, there's no... Uh, we'll do a quick inspection here, but the cams are looking just fine. Yeah, they look fine. I might gonna put a little bit of grease on these cams, a little bit of silicone grease maybe, to make it, you know, reduce a little bit of the wear. But yeah, but other than lubricating this, uh, we're just gonna put everything back together, really. Um, and um, and then gonna go back on the car and uh, wiggle that plug again, see what happens. Okay, just I uh, don't forget to mention then. Uh, so obviously we put a little bit of grease. Don't forget to put this pin here. This uh, this one here that I have lost earlier. Uh, don't forget to put it in, obviously. And uh, just one last thing that I've done, just in case. Although I don't think this was the problem. Um, I've checked, obviously, continuity. This one is working because when you put the key, it works. But this one here, I've just checked, make sure it's working. It's working just fine. Uh, that uh, switch. So... Um, so that's it really, now we're gonna definitely put everything back on and um, solder this mechanical side back on the PCB put it on the car and see what happens so, so I haven't put it yet in place but it's here all connected as you can see and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the ignition on into position 2 and I'm gonna try to replicate the problem we were having earlier so by moving this big plug mainly uh, the ignition would go on and off. So I'm going to place the phone uh, here, so you can see the dials, the cluster, and it's going to go for it then. So, key in, position one, position two, and now let me wiggle this cable here. Oh yeah. Guys, you can't watch both things at the same time, but I tell you what, this is more than, it's not failing whatsoever. It would have happened by now. I just want to show you what I'm doing here. So this is basically what I'm doing, just flicky pushing. This is what I was doing earlier, and every time I would move it like this, it would start to fail. But yeah, now it's, it's absolutely, I'll do the other one just in case, but nah, it's fine, absolutely fine. Mission off, position two, spot on. It's gonna watch it from here. So off, on, position one, position two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. Wiggle the cable. Nah, this is fixed, guys. This is repaired. I tell you what, this. I'm, I'm. The only thing I regret now is that I haven't showed you. I haven't done the that with the engine running, so we could see the engine shutting down. But as we spoke, I think we can all agree that the engine would shutting down if the ignition too. Uh, position two would uh, would go off obviously so I think that's it really uh, just gonna put everything back together obviously and uh, and yeah okay and uh, I think that's it just to wrap this up we're just gonna go quick to the engine ECU and we are going to delete any codes uh, Actually, I can. I think we're gonna do a quick test. Sorry about that. We're gonna do a quick test. Delete any codes because obviously we we set up a few codes, special when I was playing about with that uh, pressure sensor. Hope you enjoyed the video. I really hope there's some information here and some logic on the way we approach uh, this that uh, that makes some sense to you. I was nearly making a mistake on this one um and yeah i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions any comments put them below and like always uh, thank you for watching